Hello and welcome back, and if you are new here, welcome, we are very glad to have you here. Unlike previous videos, today's will not be a manual, or how-to, regarding various features and functionalities of DSO-138 oscilloscope. Instead, we will take a stroll down to sustainability in circular economy lane, and see how we can be, both environmentally responsible, and still get the most out of our electronic designs, that includes our oscilloscope. So, let's get started. In our fifth video, of our DSO-138 oscilloscope series, titled, Choosing the Right Power Source for DSO-138 Oscilloscope, at the end, we briefly touched the subject of repurposing old computer power supply unit, to power our oscilloscope, instead of buying batteries, or dedicated power adapters. In this video, we will expand, and build on that idea, but before we proceed, we need to define what sustainability and circular economy mean in general, and in particular, in the context of this video. By now, you must have already stumbled upon these two terms, as they represent a current fad in humanities. Although, in one form or another, processes and attributes that these two terms relate to, have been present throughout human industrial activities for decades, perhaps, even centuries, it is only in last couple of years, that they have reached the pinnacle of social media presence, and are being marketed as panacea, for all global economic woes and hardships. Let's give a quick theoretical background for what does, all of this gobbledygook stands for. By definition, sustainability is ability to maintain process over a time. This is comprehensive generic definition, encompassing myriad of economic activities. It can be roughly divided into three categories, economic, social, and environmental sustainability. Economic sustainability means, that a process can generate enough income or profit, to continue operating without compromising the other aspects of sustainability. Social sustainability means, that a process respects and enhances, the well-being of people and communities, both present and future. Environmental sustainability means, that a process does not harm or deplete, natural resources or ecosystems, both present and future. Put in simple terms, sustainable economic activity is aiming at mitigating harmful impact of any economic activity, and its ultimate goal is, to enrich and improve, on all aspects of human society, whether economical, social, or environmental. Unlike sustainability, which is somewhat of complex and comprehensive term, circular economy is very specific, and easy term to define. Surprisingly enough, circular economy has nothing to do with anything going around in circles, or being repetitive. It is just one more example of poor naming practices. At its core definition, circular economy is type of manufacturing process. Believe it or not, circular economy has been with us for a long, long period of time, in one form or another. Now, let's see where is the difference between regular and circular economy oriented manufacturing process. For simplicity, and clarity of understanding, we will refer to regular manufacturing process as linear. In linear manufacturing process, we have stages of production that follow linear path, from input, often in form of various raw materials, and energy required for manufacturing process, through fabrication, resulting in finished products or goods, that are being sold to the consumers. Production of a single product can be complex, requiring many inputs, or parts, that are later assembled in final stages of production, but nevertheless, each stage in production follows this exact same linearity, where one finished product from previous linear production process, becomes a raw material, or input, for the next linear production process, or where several parallel linear production processes, as a result given input, or raw materials, for final linear production process. A combination of serial, or and, parallel linear production processes is also possible, for very complex products. Take a production of a single car for example. A hundred, if not even a thousand of parts, are being assembled separately, and then put together, to make a single vehicle. As you might have already guessed, 
the major downfall of linear production process is generation of waste, and consumption of non-renewable raw materials and non-renewable sources of energy. Once a product meets its end in consumption or usability, it is discarded as a waste. More often than not, that waste has a very negative environmental impact. To mitigate this problem, a modern humanities came up with idea of recycling. Put in simple terms, recycling is reusing a waste as a raw material. For example, a consumed glass bottle of some popular beverage, can be returned to shop, or collected at recycling station, and can be reused again, in same manufacturing process, to reduce a need for new glass bottles. Point of recycling is in reusing same raw materials, over and over again, for the same manufacturing process. Point where circular economy differs from linear manufacturing process, is an origin of input of raw materials. In production process that supports circular economy, a waste from non-related manufacturing process is used as an input, or raw material. As you can see, this is nothing new. People have been doing this for a long time. For example, a wood shavings from a wood mill, that are a waste byproduct of linear manufacturing process, can be used as bedding for terrariums, can be compressed into blocks and used for heating, and etc. The point here, is in giving a waste from linear manufacturing process, one or more usage, in non-related manufacturing process. I'm sure that any one of you can think up of many more examples of circular economy. Unlike recycling, where a waste becomes an input, or raw material, in same linear manufacturing process, circular economy uses waste from one linear manufacturing process as an input, or raw material, in another non-related linear manufacturing process. However, a circular economy is not panacea for waste. It, also, has some major downfalls as well. Most obvious one being, it is not always more profitable to reuse waste as input. There are costs in collecting, transporting and transforming waste, before it can be reused again. Not to mention energy required to facilitate the entire endeavor. Also, circular economy doesn't entirely eliminate waste. Although, the original waste is reused, and by that, given one or more life cycles of usability, at the end, the same production process that supports circular economy, at the end generates waste, in one form, or another. Although, one of the goals of circular economy is to promote and support sustainability, it is not always crystal clear how does one relates to another. There are certainly very obnoxiously loud voices, advocating for circular economy, advertising it as one solution for all problems, much as snake oil, or bird milk, but there are others, who asks for more research, and practical and empirical proofs, that will show, where exactly, circular economy has advantages, over regular linear manufacturing process, or recycling. We will not blindly stand in line with one economy's fad or another, just because hashtags regarding these two terms tend to trend highly on social media. We will always ask two basic scientific questions, how and why. So, let us see, how and why, we can and should implement postulates of sustainability and circular economy in our story about DSO-138 oscilloscope. At the beginning, we mentioned one of our videos titled, Choosing the Right Power Source for DSO-138 Oscilloscope. If you have not already seen it, it would be a good idea to give it a view. What is to follow, will make much more sense and impact, if you are familiar with content of that video. So, pause this video, go and watch that one, and then come back to this point, and carry on watching this one. In that video we have taken look into two power sources for our oscilloscope. One is common household ACDC adapter, and the other one being a simple 9 volt battery. Both of those power supplies have some advantages over the other, but at the end, we concluded, that stability and interference-free power generation from 9-volt battery makes it a preferred choice for power supply. Now, this is the time and place, where we will plug in our sustainability part of the story. The batteries are pricey, 
and they do not last very long, after you deplete one, you have to go and buy another, and then another and so on. In time, this can amount to significant amount of money that you spend buying batteries to power your oscilloscope. We cannot say that we expect our oscilloscope to generate income, and in that way be in compliance with first postulate of sustainability, the economic sustainability, but in reality, buying new batteries all the time, is not sustainable as well, no pun intended. This is in direct collision with first postulate of sustainability, the economic sustainability. In sixth video of our series about DSO-138 oscilloscope, we gave an overview of genuine DSO-138 device from JYE Tech, and not so very much genuine device from FNERSI, according to that manufacturer himself. If you have not seen that video, please go watch it after you are done watching this video. We strongly believe that each one of us is responsible for respecting other people's or company's individual or collective intellectual rights and properties. By not doing so, we are promoting practices that are aimed at financial and intellectual harm of individuals and companies. We are also setting a bad educational example for current and generations to come. This is in direct collision with second postulate of sustainability, the social sustainability. Unfortunately, beside all of the advantages that 9 volt battery has as a power supply source for our oscilloscope, we cannot in fairness close eyes to extremely negative environmental impact that our choice has. The battery represents, expensive, non-renewable, toxic, one-time usage power source. After it is depleted, it is discarded as waste. Depending on type of battery, most of them contains heavy metals, such as cobalt, nickel, manganese, that can cause irreversible damage to land and water, when they come in contact with them. For the most parts, batteries cannot be recycled, or used as raw material in circular economy production processes. So, our choice has a major negative environmental impact. That is in direct collision with third postulate of sustainability, the environmental sustainability. Now comes the second part, where we plug in circular economy in our story about DSO-138 oscilloscope. As we have concluded from the first part, pertaining to sustainability, our choice of buying batteries, and supporting intellectual theft, is in direct collision with postulates of sustainability. Now, if there was only a way to replace batteries with more environmentally friendly alternative, that will be in compliance with all three postulates of sustainability, and also fairly represent our best effort for recycling, or to be more precise, reusage of discarded waste product. The answer is, an old discarded computer power supply unit. In today's time, an electronic waste, or to be more precisely old and discarded computers and parts, have become somewhat of an environmental issue. In truth, there are well-documented efforts in tackling this issue, from refurbishing old computers and parts, thus giving them one more life cycle in usability, through recycling by extracting precious metals, to reusing in different ways, old parts as new input, in non-related processes, which is in compliance with postulate of circular economy. Let's see how we can reuse an old computer power supply unit, to replace our battery, as power supply source for our oscilloscope, and even more. You may already have one of these, well maybe, not this exact same model, but something similar. Or, if not, you can very easily, and for a small amount of money, find one on flea market, or take one from discarded old computer. Let's take our story one step further in effort to comply with circular economy. I bet, that some old shoe box, or drawer contains some old, or maybe, broken power adapters, that you have not thrown in garbage yet. We, ourselves, have a stock of these ACDC power adapters, most of them broken, or out of commission, for one reason or another. If you are not familiar with computer power supply unit, a quick overview is in order then. The main function of PSU is to take AC power from wall outlet and transform it into various DC outputs to provide power to computer's motherboard and various components such as graphic card, hard drive, optical device and etc. 
The one aspect that is very important for us, is that PSU generates very steady DC output of various voltages, 3.3 volts, 5 volts, and 12 volts. The last one is especially important to us, as it can be used to power our oscilloscope. Remember that, by manufacturer specifications, the oscilloscope accepts everything between 8 to 12 volts, for power input. And did we mention it before, it is a very, very steady DC output of 12 volts, almost as steady, as one provided by a battery. Now, let's take our attention to spare AC-DC adapters. We are especially interested in those that have 5.25mm barrel connector. That is the same one, that oscilloscope has connector for connecting external power source. Now, let's do some snipping and reconnecting in order to fashion ourselves a power supply source from an old PSU and cable from AC-DC adapter. As you can see, we have taken one 12 volts rail from our PSU, stripped the unnecessary Molex connector, and with assistance of clamps, connected a cable from discarded AC-DC adapter. As a result, we fashioned ourselves a power supply source for our oscilloscope. To expand on idea, you can take as many spare cables as you have, connect them to various rails from PSU, and fashion yourself a number of 3.3, 5, and 12 volt outputs. You can use those outputs to simultaneously power oscilloscope and breadboard, as we did in our previous video. Now, have in mind that 12 volt power supply is the maximum that our oscilloscope can take in. It is not recommended to keep oscilloscope powered up for a long period of time when using 12 volts power supply, as that voltage generates a lot of heat, and in long run, can shorten a lifetime span of your device. If there was only a way to somehow get that recommended 9 volt DC output. But our PSU doesn't supply 9 volt at any rail. But now, wait a minute. A quite a few times in our videos, we said that voltage is nothing more than result of potential differences between two points. Subtract two different potential values, and you get voltage. Not to mention the obvious, but that 12 volt rail, and that 3.3 volt rail, kind of begs us to be subtracted, to provide us with almost 9 volt output. Can we do that? Why not? We said, many times before, 9 volts can be result from subtracting 99 and 90 volts, and it also can be result of subtracting 9 and 0 volts, but it can also be result of subtracting 12 and 3 volts, or 12 and 3.3 volts to be more precise, with little rounding up. If you take this approach, and fashion yourself a 9 volt output in this manner, and decide to use it, not only to power the oscilloscope, but to provide power for your circuit as well, can you tell us, what now has to be your ground point for the entire circuit? Please leave your answer in comment section below this video. Let's see, how by repurposing an old computer power supply unit, and a couple of cables from discarded AC-DC adapters, we have met three goals of sustainability, and implemented postulate of circular economy. 1. Economic Sustainability By eliminating recurring need to buy new batteries all the time, we have eliminated costs for power supply source. 2. Social Sustainability We have learned something new. We demonstrated how we can repurpose old junk, and build something new, and of value, with no additional costs. We expanded our knowledge, gained new skills, and hopefully, inspired some of you, by using this as a template, to build something new and of value to and by yourself. 3. Environmental Sustainability By eliminating constant need for new batteries, we are making impact in reducing toxic waste and protecting the environment. By repurposing and reusing old PSU and cables we have eliminated issue of adding to the problem of computer waste. 4. Circular Economy Although, we are not engaged in any manufacturing process, nevertheless, by taking waste in form of discarded old PSU, and cables from adapters, in truest sense of circular economy, we have repurposed and reused, in non-original way, 
two waste products, that have become power supply source for our oscilloscope, and for all our future electronic projects. Sustainability. Checked. Circular economy. Checked. Now, you may argue that negative footprint of our actions is insignificant, or even non-existing, but in reality, it is not zero. And no matter how small contribution change in our behavior can have on global scale, please have in mind that every little bit helps. If, after watching this video, even one of you decides to change, and accept concepts from this video, then we have made a positive impact, and we could not be happier because of that. Remember that, even doing just one small thing right at the time, is sometimes more than enough. This concludes our story about DSO-138 Oscilloscope, Sustainability, and Circular Economy. For our next video, we will demonstrate some of more advanced features and functionalities of DSO-138 Oscilloscope. Please, before you leave, show your appreciation by liking this video, sharing it, leaving a comment, and consider subscribing. Thank you, and see you next time. Bye.